Banquo was lost. Banquo wasn't happy when he remembered what the witches had promised Macbeth. They said you would be Thane of Cowder and then King of Scotland. Everything they said has come true. Now you are the king. Perhaps it was you who killed Duncan and not Dunbane and Malcolm. He did not like to think that Macbeth was a murderer. And what was it that they promised me? He said to himself. Less than Macbeth, but more than Macbeth. Was that it? No, there was something else. Let me see if I can remember. Oh, yes, that was it. You will not be king, but your children's children will be kings. I wonder what that means and whether it will come true as well. Macbeth was also thinking about what the witches had said. They said I would be Thane of Cowder and then King of Scotland. Everything they said has come true, but there was something else, something about Banquo. Oh yes, they told Banquo that his children's children would be kings. Had I killed the Duncan for nothing, will Banquo's son Flynn get the crown after me? Macbeth thought about his old friend, Banquo Sanders. He said to himself, he knows about the witches, perhaps he suspects that uh, it was me who killed Duncan, I'm afraid of him. Every day Macbeth fear of Banquo and his son increased. I must do something, he told himself, I can't live uh, in fear all my life. Then he thought of a wicked plan. One day Macbeth invited all the things to a feast at the, play, the palace. Make sure that you come, my old friend, he said to Banquo. Feast is in your honor. I will be there, said Banquo. And bring Flynn's with you, said Macbeth. The feast is for him as well. He will be there, said Banquo. We are riding out this afternoon, but we will be back at the castle for the feast. Tomorrow we must have a long talk, Macbeth went on. I hear that Malcolm and Donabane have gone to England and Ireland. They are trying to make trouble for me, and we have to decide what to do about them. Very well, Banquo replied. Tomorrow we'll talk about the problem. Macbeth smiled grimly to himself. There will be no feast for you tonight, my friend, he thought. And no talk tomorrow. Tonight you and Flynn's will both be dead. My man will kill you both when you are out riding. With you and Flynn's dead, I will be safe. Lady Macbeth knew nothing of Macbeth's plan to kill Banquo and Flynn's. She only knew that Macbeth was worried about something. He had been unhappy since the murder of Duncan and was sleeping badly. You must forget about the murder, she told him. The past is the past. We can't change it now. We must be safe from danger, Macbeth answered. It's true that Duncan is dead and I am king, but still, try to be more cheerful, Lady Macbeth said. Remember, there is the feast tonight. I'll be cheerful tonight, my love, Macbeth promised her. And yet, I keep thinking about Banco and Flynn's. They worry me. What can we do about them? asked his wife. I have already done something, Macbeth told her. It's better that you don't know about it. Late the evening, three men were hiding near the palace. Are you sure Banco and Flynn's will come this way? said one of the men. They will come this way, answered another, <coughs> and when they do, we will kill them both, said the third man. Macbeth wants them both to die. Here they are, said the first man. I can hear the horses. The three men stood up with their knives in their hands. They could see Banquo and the fiends in front of them. Now, cried the third man, as he pulled Banquo off his horse. He put the knife to Banquo's heart. Attack, cried the other two men. They approached Flynn's. Ride, Flynn's, ride, shouted Banco. It's a trap. Flynn's rode away as fast as he could. Macbeth welcomed the 
Danes when they arrived at the castle for the feast. I'm happy to see you all, he said. He walked around the table, shaking their hands and smiling. Tonight we will enjoy ourselves with food and wine, he said. As Macbeth was walking around the table talking to his guests, he saw one of the murderers enter the room. He went up to him. Well, he asked quietly. How did it go? Bank was dead, the man replied. And Flince? asked Macbeth. Tell me that Flince is dead as well. Flince is killed, as the man said. He is free. Then I am not safe after all. Flince is dangerous, Macbeth whispered. He looked at the murderer. You'd better go, he ordered. There is blood on your face. We talk tomorrow. He sighed and looked worried. Lady Macbeth was looking at the her husband. She knew that something was wrong. <coughs> Tonight is a feast. She called she called to him. The king must be cheerful tonight. You're right, my love, Macbeth told her. Tonight we will eat and be happy with our guests. Will your majesty sit with us? Lennox asked politely. Where shall I sit? She asked Macbeth. All the chairs are taken. Here, your majesty. Sit here, said Lennox. There is an empty chair beside me. Macbeth looked at the, the chair beside Lennox. He saw the ghost of Banquo sitting there. Suddenly he began to tremble and he went very pale. I didn't not I didn't do it, he cried out to the ghost. Don't sit there looking at me like that, I didn't do it. The ghost of Banco looked steadily at the Macbeth for a moment. What's the matter with the king? The thing said. Why is he so frightened at who he is uh, uh, he talking to? That chair is empty. It's just an illness of his, said the Lady Macbeth. Is like uh, this uh, sometimes. He'll be all right in a moment. She went up to her husband. What's the matter with you? She whispered angrily. Remember your guests. Where? As your courage, my courage, responded Macbeth. I'm a brave man to look at the ghost and do not run away. Lady Macbeth was angry now. What ghost? There is nothing there, she told him. Ghost, you see, is like the knife you saw before you killed Danica. It's just your fear and your imagination. There's nothing there. But look at it, her husband whispered. It's Banquo. Can't you see? As Michael spoke, the ghost of Banquo disappeared from his sight. I tell you, it was Banquo, Macbeth whispered to his wife. I saw him there. I tell you, there was nothing there, his wife whispered. How is it possible? He was thinking. There have been terrible crimes in the past. But uh, did men never come back uh, to torment their killers before? Remember your guests, Lady Macbeth warned him. Macbeth tur turned to the Danes. Forgive me, he said. It is uh, an illness of mine. Let's sit and drink, my friends. He took up a glass and filled it with uh, wine. Then he raised the glass. To all of us, he cried. To us and Banquo. I wish Banco could be here with us tonight. The things raised their glasses. Height in the air. To us and the Banco, they cried. At that moment, Banco's ghost came back into the room and looked again at Macbeth. Macbeth stared at the ghost. He was frightened. Why look at me? he shouted. Now he was angry with the ghost. Away with you. There's nothing for you here. He looked he looked at his wife. How can you look at him and not be afraid? He asked. I am a brave man, but he frightens me. What does the king mean? What is he looking at? Asked the things. What's the matter with the king? It's nothing, replied the remark, but it's just the king's illness. It will pass, but, no, but for now let's part. The king needs to rest because uh, he, he is 
he, he is ill. The things left the table. Macbeth and his wife took it together. Macduff didn't come tonight, Macbeth said. Why do you think he didn't come? I don't know, his wife replied. I don't trust any of them, Macbeth said to his wife. Not a single one of them. They are all my enemies. I will go back to three witches, Macbeth decided. I must find out from them what is going to happen. Even if they tell me the worst, I must know. You are tired, Lady Macbeth told him. You need to sleep. <laughs>